previously on this channel. One Labyrinth Against the Wilderness. Getting some results. Perhaps not enough to survive. Ooh. Hey everyone, my name is Sandu and this is AI Learns, a series where I try and train AIs to do as dumb as possible stuff, the dumber the better. But before we start, like and subscribe, otherwise Chico's will come. You might remember Chico's from my previous videos where he tried to survive in the wilderness, the keyword being tried, but anyways, in today's video he will be our assistant in a completely different task. Meet Goran! Goran was chilling in the middle of the map without bothering anyone until one little annoying prick decided to mess around with him. But since Chico isn't worthy of Goran even moving, Goran will be sitting in the same spot always. Oh, and Goran not moving is completely his decision and has nothing to do with my laziness. Okay? Cool. Goran will be following Chico with his gaze like a sentry turret following him everywhere he goes and shooting fireballs in the right moments, but that's kinda sad, isn't it? Cause Goran is the lord of hell after all. That is why Goran will have also two special charge attacks. One is a melee attack and the other one is a ranged attack. The ranged attack will take some time to charge, and once it's done, Goran will shoot multiple projectiles at the enemy, being Chico's. By the way, initially I have messed up something with the code for the ranged charge attack, and that's actually how it was looking. Dope, huh? Sadly I had to fix that because Chickles was getting nauseous and poking all over the training place, and I know for sure I'm not cleaning that. The melee attack, however, is triggered when the little sucker is right next to the boss. Ooh, huh? So this attack takes quite a while to charge, but come on, it looks dope, doesn't it? And also it one shots the little red. But that's not everything that Goran actually can do. If he gets beaten way too many times by our little red and finally catches rabies, he will be able to heal himself. Yep, just like that. Still not enough? Okay, I gave him immunity. Which literally means he won't take any damage. Are you entertained now? Brave, aren't we, when it's not us who has to fight? Anyways, Chico's emotional stability is gonna be on your consciousness. Alright, alright, it's not all that bad. Basically, when Goran will be charging his special attacks, or when he will be healing, he will become vulnerable. Vulner, vulnerable, vulner. Vulnerable. He will become vulnerable. Anyways, if Chico's attacks during this time, the boss will get stunned. So the idea here is that Chico's would have to run and dodge all of Goran's attacks, and once the boss starts a charging attacks or starts healing, Chico's would have to approach and fight, then retreat and repeat the whole procedure. Also, preferably not dying along the way. Now, how do we train this dum dum to do all of that? Chickles will be given a very, very small piece of candy. One over 50,000 to be exact. And he will be awarded that for every single step he is alive. This will allow him to understand from iteration to iteration that the longer he survives, the more candies he will get. But an annoying rat that's able to survive for a very long period of time isn't really enough to kill a boss, is it? So, whenever Chico successfully attacks Goran, aka deals damage, he will be rewarded with one-tenth of a candy. The reason we give him such small pieces of candy is because we don't want to confuse his little dumb brain with big numbers, and also we don't want to give him diabetes. If he kills the boss and wins the game, he will be rewarded with a whole candy. But in case he dies, half of it will be taken back. Alright, almost forgot. If Chico gets hit, he will also get the punishment. In theory, it shouldn't make any difference in the long run, because if he wants to win the game, he shouldn't get hit. But that's not for the result, that's for sending a message. By the way, my initial idea for this video was to make a small RPG game for Chico's. 
one where he would need to find different types of enemies, level up, become stronger and lastly fight the boss. The boss would combine all the elements from previous fought enemies, but the whole RPG and leveling system proved to be quite difficult for Chicos to grasp. The understanding which stats are more important than the others and how to level up efficiently would come way too slow, so I decided to have a boss fight instead. Alright, that being said, for this project Chickles has trained for a little more than 30,000 iterations. It wasn't him alone actually, it was a total of 30 simulations training in parallel at a time scale of 10, which means that for every second in real life, 10 seconds in the simulation have already passed. There was also a small problem. The default boss is much too difficult for Chicos to train on. If Chicos would be placed against an almost immortal deity from the get-go, he would get lost and would not learn anything because the training would be too difficult. That is why there were four different iterations of Goran along his training. The first iteration had a slower charge time, which allowed Chicos more time to understand that it is time to attack. It also had zero cooldown time for charge attacks, which meant that Goran will always use charge attacks, resulting in being vulnerable all the time. This version of Goran had only 1 HP, allowing Chikos to win the game from one correct attack, which would be any time he desires, since Goran is always charging an attack, thus vulnerable. This iteration was mainly to allow Chikos to learn how to walk and navigate in the environment. The second iteration of Goran was stronger. It still had slower charges, but this time it would also use regular attacks. Still 1 HP though. This allowed Chikos to understand the basic concepts of this simulation. Third iteration had the normal charge time, as well as a normal attack. Also, this time the boss had 10 HP. This means it now became impossible to kill Goran from one lucky hit. Chikos would need to stun him at least twice to have enough time to kill the boss. This iteration taught Chikos a very crucial lesson. It's very important to dodge projectiles, since he won't have enough HP anymore to take them all in like a sponge. The fourth and final iteration of Goran had all the same parameters except now with 100 HP. I expect him to soon realize that it's easier to dodge projectiles from afar, so he will keep his distance and then he will approach to attack only in the necessary time. Let's see how that actually turns out. Hmm. It seems that even after so much training, Chickles hasn't even understood that getting hit is no bueno. His strategy so far is catching as many bullets with his face as possible, and I must say he is quite succeeding at it. I think he's down to 2-3 health points already. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, Chickles has 10 health points and Goran has 100. So yeah, not a very good start. Despite that, it looks like Chickles finally got a grasp of what is going on and has found his flow. Just look at him go. <laughs> Every time the boss charges his attack, Chickles just stops his area completely. Watch out, watch out, watch out. I know that was kinda the whole point, but it's still pretty impressive to see him being so efficient. Now I almost feel bad for Goran. Just look at this little devil picking him up. Slowly but surely. That being said, I couldn't help but notice the fact that Chikos is actually using a different strategy than anticipated. I believe he has estimated it is much easier to be next to the boss instead of running away and approaching all the time. Now that I think about it, it does make a lot of sense, you know. If he is fast enough to dodge bullets even in close range, why bother running away and wasting precious time? 
Instead, he is able to attack the boss immediately when other Goran starts charging or healing. Not wasting any time getting close most probably allows him to deal a few more hits which ends up in a better result, thus he preferred this strategy. Goran did not manage to charge a single attack nor did he manage to heal. Quite impressive. And now he's dead. Oh well, seems like Chico's dominated the Lord of Hell quite easily. I can say I wasn't really expecting that, and I definitely wasn't expecting that he will use the strategy that he actually used, the one where he kept close to the boss, and in the right time the boss just caught a fist in his stomach. <laughs> I guess I have underestimated your ballsiness, Chickles. Props to you. Next time, I'll definitely come up with a Tatar challenge. That actually makes me think. How many real bosses in real games have counterintuitive strategies that can allow defeating them in such an easy manner as the one that Chico discovered today? What if I would recreate some of the most iconic video game bosses and throw Chico in that simulation and see if he finds an interesting way of fighting them? If that's something that sparks interest in you and is something that you think you'd like to see on this channel, please leave a comment underneath this video below. In case you're wondering why I haven't been uploading for quite a while now, that's actually because I was busy with real life. You know, right? But as you can see, recently I moved to a new place, also I have found a full-time job as a developer. But don't you ever think that I forgot about you? Or that I didn't see all your cheeky messages and attempts to revive me on the Discord channel? By the way, link to it in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video! If you enjoyed this video, consider watching these other videos of mine. Also subscribe to the channel.